Hi there, it's Karen at Cory Paper Crafts here, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Central Scotland. Welcome back to another project which uses products from the Whale of a Time suite and it's this one here, a fairly spacious milk carton. And for this one I've used Just Jade cardstock, matching it with the Just Jade ribbon and I've stamped my, stamped my sentiment using Just Jade ink and cut it out using the second smallest um, square from the stitched shapes framelits that was hard to say <laughs> the designer series paper is the whale of a time six by six papers and I'll just very quickly show you those or what's left of them anyway one of my favorites by far and um, I'm just loving these but lots of really nice designs in here so I'll just flick through those very very quickly I can see me going through quite a few packs of this and the oops my sentiment while I knock everything over was stamped using the whale done stamp set it's a photo polymer stamp set so it's the clear one and I used this stamp here so I've already stamped and die cut my um, sentiment for the project I'm going to make with you on camera just now just to save a bit of time and to save me trying to negotiate my uh, big shot underneath the camera so I'm going to show you how I made it so what you will need is almost a full sheet of international A4 so I've cut it to 11 and a half inches but I've left it at its full eight and a quarter and this is Bami Blue this time, another one of the colours in the suite and you're going to need um, four pieces of designer series paper which measure two and a half inches by three and a half inches and two pieces which measure two and a half inches by one and a half and as I say I stamped my sentiment ahead of time. So let's get on and do some scoring first of all. I'm just going to bring in the scoreboard and again I'm filming in the evening so apologies for any bit of glare that you might get I'll try and avoid it as much as I can so on the long side first of all you are going to score at two and three quarters five and a half eight and a quarter and eleven and then I'm going to turn it to the short side and score at, let me think now, two and five and three quarters. And then just flip it over but keeping it the same. So we've scored at two and five and three quarters here. And then we're going to score on this side at seven and a half. And then we're going to flip it back to the long side into its original position and we're just going to put two little score marks just down to this first score line here and the first one is going to be at one and three eighths and the second is at six and seven eighths and that's just markers for helping us put the box together so i'm going to get rid of my scoreboard and bring in my ruler because what I want to do now is just make diagonal lines from each of these scores here down to the corners on these panels here. So I'm just going to start with my ball tool and I'm using the smaller end of it in here and just allow room for that to match up with that score line. So. Scores here. Oops, I've overshot that one a little bit, but it doesn't matter. You're not going to see it. And then just carefully match that up to the corner here and join those up. And that's it. So let's fold and burnish on all of those score lines, but we're just ignoring these diagonal ones at the top. They're going to do their own thing just very shortly. There we are. I'm, uh, I'm racing my husband tonight. He's away to make a cup of tea and 
doesn't really believe that I'll be finished my video in time to drink it while it's still hot. <laughs> so I've accepted that challenge. Now I need my paper snips to do some cutting. Here we are here. So we've got this narrow strip and this panel along the top and we've got these smaller rectangles along the bottom and these are going to form the base of our box but like always we want to remove this smaller rectangle here. I'm also um, going to see if I can stay friends with the new stamping seals to make this project tonight so we'll see how that goes. We haven't really been friends up until now but I'm going to try. And then I'm going to just cut straight up these three score lines here. Stamp and seal. Um, there's new stamp and seal and stamp and seal plus. So the stamp and seal is what has replaced the um, snail that we had, and the stamp and seal plus has replaced the fast fuse, and they're longer and better. So that's all the cutting done. So what I want to do now is add my designer series papers and this is where we find out if the stamp and seal and I are going to be friends. So this is the new stamp and seal. I've got it a bit sticky already. I can't seem to do anything with glues or adhesives without making a mess. So I'm going to here we go. Oh, here we go already. We're falling out already. So oh my goodness, here we go. I had this when I made the original one as well. So let's see if we can just get the the pain out of the way in a one -er. I don't know why I'm having to keep turning it round. I think it's it's getting the technique with it. So let's just do all of these just now. Um, I'm doing something wrong, I think. Definitely doing something wrong and I'm covered in it already. Um, I'm not sure what it is I'm doing. Oops, I thought I would got it going there. I'm just going to pop a little bit top and bottom on these as well to make sure that this stays stuck. I think it's actually the angle that I'm holding it at. I don't. I don't think I'm. Oops, I don't think I'm holding it at the right angle, and I might be pressing too hard. That might be part of the problem. So, watch this space. What I can tell you is it is very, oh, famous last words, very sticky indeed. So that's all those panels with their glue on. And I'll just do these two panels as well. I'm trying to put my finger where I'm not going to stick to it because it's so sticky. I think that's what's wrong. I think it's the angle that I'm trying to roll it at. So a bit of practice coming up I think just to get a bit better at it. There we are. So that was fairly painless. Not say completely but fairly. <laughs> So I'm going to put these two panels on these plain panels here. I'm just ignoring these two with the score lines on them. There we are. And then let me think. This is going to be... This is the front panel and um, let's have a look. I think I'm going to have this panel on the side and I want this seaweed on the front. 
so I need to match these now so that one goes on the side and that one will be on the back there we are and then I'll come in put the lid on my stamp and seal and then I'm going to use my stamp and seal plus wish me luck <laughs> You'll see the difference actually between this and the stamp and seal because this has a sort of ridge to it and I much prefer the stamp and seal plus and it just sits where it is and behaves itself until you turn it over at the ends. So let's pop the sides of the box together. There we are make sure I know where the back of my box is so that's the seam at the back so I'm going to pop the two side panels in like so and because I wanted a bit more height the, the bottom panels are a little bit shorter but that's okay and I'm going to attempt some stamp and seal plus to join the bottom of it together and then a piece a bit closer to the edge I think yep I much prefer the stamp and seal plus to the stamp and seal so I need a bit more practice with the stamp and seal I think and I've got a tiny little bit of overlap here so I'm just going to trim that off like so I think that side's actually okay so all that's left to do is just push in on those score marks that we made earlier and that's what makes our box come together nicely. So because we're going through four thicknesses of card and it really is quite thick, I'm going to use my crocodile and I'm just going to centre that there. Honestly, it makes short work of punching holes if you don't have one I would recommend it and then try and punch that hole there too there we are and then I'm going to use the uh, pool party shimmer ribbon is it sheer ribbon um, which is also part of this suite and it's just gorgeous I know the cardstock is bammy blue but this is so sheer that you don't really notice that it's not exactly the same colour so I'm just going to make sure I've got my box the right way around because I'm famous for not getting my boxes the right way around and just pop the ribbon through from the front to the back and then back through again and just pull that through and straighten it up a little bit I think and cut that off about there and then I'm going to use a trick that I learned um, just recently from Julie DiMatteo who is the paper pixie who actually used um, a pair of tweezers and the reverse tweezers here we are to help hold her a knot in place until you finish tying the bow so I'm just going to get that knot centered where I want it and then Oh gosh, if I could actually get it to stay still until I get the tweezers on it to hold it in place, which didn't really work, so let's try that again. Oh my goodness. It worked on the first box, but it's not working on this one. Let's try that again. There we go, that's a bit better. I think it's because the ribbon's too sheer and that's not going to work. So let's just abandon that idea and try and tie the knot as best we can. You can see this going fabulously wrong because I've managed to get my box at a really awkward angle and I think I might have just gone off camera, but never mind. 
um, that's a bit of a disaster so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tie it the normal way round this way and with a bit of luck it'll actually go the right way round she said <laughs> oh my goodness me I hate tying bows and, and they hate me <laughs> Oh, that, that's gonna have to do because we're going to be here all night otherwise and I've got to go to bed soon and get up for my day job tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it at that. So let's just tidy up the ends a little bit. Um, oh well. The joys of crafting. Aha. Uh -huh. So there we go. So that's my box made with the dodgiest bow you ever saw. And then I'm just going to... I'm actually going to just grab my liquid glue because these these little corners here are annoying me so I need those to stick down because they're on the front of the box and that's just gonna that's just gonna annoy me so I'll just hold that down for a minute that's better that's much better. Thank you liquid glue. And then I'm going to just pop some dimensionals on the back of my sentiment. And you know me, I don't, uh, I don't scrimp on my dimensionals. I might pop one um, in the middle as well. There we are. Take the backings off and try and get it straight in the middle on the front but actually I don't want to cover up I don't want to cover up all my nice seaweed but it's not going to look right anywhere else I don't think so I'm just going to stick it there there we are you're kind of a big deal. I really like that. Last of all, I'm going to bring in the holiday rhinestones and I'm going to use the, I'm sure it's pool party here and it's this size that I'm going to use and I'm going to just pop one right here. One about here and another one just here to add a little sparkle and that is my box made possibly in record time for me in a video so I don't know which one I like best I think I like them both apart from the dodgy bow but oh it's quirky so let's just go with it plenty of room in these boxes so you can really fill them with treats um, but that's it for now i'll be back again in a few days and i hope to see you then thanks again bye bye